Hey everybody, this is Ryan Alexander with Denison Yachting. I am wrapping up today's shoot, and before I take you on board, uh, it's been about three years since I've started filming these walkthroughs, and about 400 boats later, I have to admit, you start to see a theme. It's the same spaces used in the same ways, and for all of the talk about innovation, you uh, recognize very quickly doing these walkthroughs that Innovation is a big word, and today I have the privilege of showing you a boat that you most likely uh, have never seen in the water, uh, much less been on board, and I'm going to introduce you to my friend Mark. Mark is a disruptor. He has done well in business outside of boats and has decided that he wanted to build himself the perfect boat, and I think he did it. We're going to show it to you guys. It's called the Sea Force 51. And we're excited to announce that we're dealers for this boat. And if you like what you see, you can reach out. We'd love to answer any questions that you have. Um, as Mark's about to tell you, we'd love to get you on board. You gotta experience this boat in person. I'm gonna show you what she looks like when she's underway, and we'll get things going. My name is Mark Calzaretta, and I'm the owner of Seaforce Center Consoles. Thanks for joining us today. Myself and Ryan are going to give you an overview of the 51, the 510cc, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the rest of the model line and tell you about the plans that we have here at Seaforce Center Consoles. So my love of the water has been fueled from a young age by my relationship with my grandfather. My grandfather was in the Navy, um, served in World War II. He loved the water, so I fished with him. He had a 1950 Evinrude, like seven and a half horsepower outboard. We used to lug that thing down and rent a uh, rowboat. I was the bilge pump. We used to cut uh, gallon milk jugs open, and as the boat would start to fill with water, because they always did, I would be in the back bilging out the water. But I loved it, and we always had a really good time. We caught fluke, we caught bluefish, things like that, up in New Jersey. He always, always wanted a boat. Unfortunately, he passed away before he ever owned the boat. Um, and that really, really fueled me um, for the rest of my life. Um, I always wanted a boat, um, because my grandfather wanted one, and I always loved fishing. Um, so it was pretty natural as I got older, as soon as I could afford it, I, I bought my first boat. I think we're going to start things off with explaining exactly what the 510 is. The 510, in a nutshell, is a hybrid center console. And what do I mean by hybrid? It's a center console at its core. It behaves like one, you use it and fish it just like a center console. You're able to get into two feet of water when you trim up the motors, it's fast. But in the hybrid sense, it has the accommodations and all the characteristics of a sport fish or an express. And so in that sense, it's a mashup. It's a center console, a sport fish, and an express boat all in the same vessel. Before we get into a detailed walkthrough on this 510cc, I think it's important for you to understand the game-changing innovations that you can expect across the entire Seaforce model line. The first of these innovations is our VSI, our Vessel System Integration. What that means is that this boat is completely integrated and you can run this boat remotely. If you're gonna get ready for a trip and you're at your house and you wanna start spooling up your Sea Keeper, your Insta Freezers, things like that, you can. You wanna turn on your air conditioners, you can. Another innovation is that our boats can run in or out of the water. They're both water-cooled and air-cooled, and those are all the systems in the boat. What that means is that out of the water, you can use your air conditioning systems, you can start chilling down your Insta Freezers, the third innovation that I want to just quickly go over is our InstaFreezer technology. All of our fish boxes and live wells double as both refrigerators and freezers, just like you'd have in your home or in your garage, a chest freezer. That's the type of technology that we have in all of our fish boxes and live wells. It's thermostatically controlled anywhere within the boat and you can adjust them from say 50 degrees all the way down to like negative four degrees. 
You can be out five to six days on your generator running without touching land. You don't really need ice. Your fish boxes are essentially freezers and you're dumping the fish literally right in out of the water into like what would be a chest freezer in your garage. Before we dive any deeper into the 510cc's history and design philosophy, let's start breaking her down area by area, beginning with her engine package. As you see her, she's equipped with five Mercury 450s that make those deep offshore runs possible. From their reliability to their combined 2,250 horsepower, these are just one of the power options available throughout the Seaforce line. These engines give the 510 a top speed of around 60 miles an hour and a comfortable cruise of around 37 miles an hour. When cruising at this rate, you can plan on getting around 105 gallons an hour when running the Mercury's at around 3,500 RPM. There's enough fuel capacity to hold 1,000 gallons of fuel between three tanks that give you a range of about 500 nautical miles. Immediately forward of the engines, we have a 50 amp shore power cable as well as port and starboard wash down hoses with quick connects. A great aspect of this design is the teak cover board that hinges down creating a path where you can move back and forth as you need. One of the nice things about this aft walkway is that after you catch a fish or if you lose your bait, you've got easy access into the cockpit through one of two transom doors, port and starboard. This is where we have our bait and tackle station. Starting here in the middle, you see we've got tackle to port and starboard. And these here are separated by a very serious ice maker. Some of the other features found here along the aft of the enclosure are a separate isotherm refrigerator as well as a freezer. Above these, we see that there's also a sink on the starboard side with an additional hookup point for a hot and cold water washdown. Centerline and above the prep area, we have the first of four Simrad NSS12 multifunction displays that serve the area well by allowing you to see exactly where you're at and what's going on below the surface of the water. This screen is right next to the teaser reel remotes, which get a lot of use on this boat. Aft, we see the first two of four live wells. The larger live wells found below the transom seating each offer 60 gallons per tank. And then two more are found outboard of these with 35 gallon live wells integrated into the gunnels. A great feature that we see next to the port side bait well is a heavy duty dive door that makes just about everything that involves fishing and diving easier. Underfoot, you'll note that the entire exterior sole is covered in marine mat flooring, making this a comfortable space to get bait prepped and to wade out the fish. Also found at foot level are three hatches. Two of these are ultra-reliable in-deck coil-wrapped fish boxes, which are insulated. And below the centerline split hatch is where we see that this boat is equipped with a 16 kW Kohler diesel generator with a separate 50 gallons of diesel fuel that'll run for six days with no need for refueling. Also found down here is a Seakeeper 6 gyroscopic stabilizer. Turning our attention forward once again, let's take a look above the bait and tackle area. A few things to love up here is that there's a JL audio sound system, which is tied into a powerful sound bar. Speakers are arranged all throughout the boat, which helps get you through those long days. When a day trip spills over into the evening or gets going before the sun comes up, you'll benefit greatly from the Lumitech LED spreader lights and additional complementary lighting that makes easy work of the darkest hours. One final feature that I want to point out here is the hydraulic attack rack that moves up and down depending on what rod and reel setup you're using at different points throughout the day. Having over 50 rod holders throughout virtually every corner of this boat means that you're always ready when the time comes. Next, we're gonna take a look at an essential feature on any of the Seaforce center console designs, her tower. Given even difficult conditions, this is where you're gonna be tempted to run the boat from. 
Designed out of lightweight aluminum, the upper helm is as fully loaded as any you'll find in this class. Let's first take a look at the helm itself and we'll go from there. Facing the electronics is a custom bolstered bench seat with the same stitching and color we see on all of the other exterior cushions. From here, you're an arm's reach away from the second of four Simrad Evo 3 multifunction displays. Centerline is a fully adjustable Edson steering wheel finished in black like the rest of the dash. Other important controls found here are the traditional engine throttles, a piloting joystick, and a Zipwake auto trim control. The navigation equipment that keeps the boat connected at all times starts with a Simrad 10KW 4-foot open array radar. For the more up-close and personal situations, the 51 is equipped with a FLIR M324 as well as a night track marine night vision camera that gives you a clear view of your surroundings in low light. Finally, I'd like to point out the 27-foot Gemlux Blue Water Outriggers that flank the tower. Note that these are internally rigged, doing away with a lot of the hassle associated with traditional outriggers. From the fishing setup to the electronics and their layout, everything up here allows you to take full advantage of the high-end Seaforce platform. The hybrid nature of our boats is not just limited to the design or the aesthetics or the accommodations, but it extends to the hull form as well. We have an aggressive dead rise on our boats and due to our unique strake geometry, the boat thinks that it has less beam than it does because our outer strake acts as a double chine, so essentially reducing beam. In addition, we have a dynamic keel pad that channels water back to the keel, which creates very, very little bow rise in the boat and also creates efficiency at a very low planing speed. With a bird's eye view, the bow from the shape to the layout is stunning and really leans into the aggressive geometry that the boat is based around. One of the safety features that arises as a byproduct are deep padded gunnels running down both sides of the boat. These also have a non-skid finish, eight 12-inch cleats that collapse, and storage space all around. For example, this is a storage drawer on the starboard side designed specifically to hold 32-inch spreader bars or a pair of 18-inch bars. Also impressive are the huge bilateral hatches in the deck where you can store rods, reels, and oversized gaffs. Arriving at the bow, we'll next take a look at the center of the boat where we have a huge raised sun pad with grab rails that run up and down both sides. This area benefits from the same sound bar in the cockpit as well as similar spreader lights. Looking below the sun pad grab rails, you can see the windows in the structure that light up the lower deck. We'll revisit this area in just a few minutes. There's another seating and entertaining area that's found forward of the sun pad, where we have a forward facing bench seat that's part of a dynamic, reconfigurable design. Before we move into the enclosure, I wanna show you how the table setup works here on the bow. You've got your fresh and salt water wash downs, as well as this touch pad right here. Um, these are all presets, so if you hit one, it leaves the table in the low position, essentially just a platform that you can walk over. If you hit two, it's gonna raise the platform up and create an even larger platform, joining together the aft seating and this forward bench here. This is a casting platform, makes fishing a whole lot easier. And after it gets into this raised position here and you drop the sun pad on, you have this third option. And that's what turns this area into a dinette. The last thing to point out up here on the bow is the anchoring system. Beneath a molded hatch, we have an Easy Puller Easy 6 Rebel windlass and a 55 pound Lumar anchor with just under a thousand feet of road and chain. These boats are designed to be extremely efficient but also extremely fast. So our hull forms, when we design them, they're designed for high horsepower, they're overbuilt, they're over-engineered. Everything that we build in, our stringer grids are integrated in, they're all structure. Everything's got a place, everything's got a home. And why do we do that? 
These are canyon tested boats. That's how we developed these boats. That's how we came up with the concepts and all of the prototyping and everything that we did within designing this line was developed with a focus of taking these boats very, very far offshore. If it's a tournament, you gotta take the boat out. If it's rough in the morning, you've gotta run in the morning. You don't wait till the afternoon. That's not what they're designed to do. They're designed to go when you need to go. There's likely no area of the boat poured over as much as the helm and the aluminum substructure that makes it up. Lightweight and air conditioned by a dedicated 16,000 BTU HVAC unit, there's very little that you can throw at this helm that it can't take command over. In the aft section of the enclosure is where we see the boat's dinette. U-shaped seating surrounds an electric table on three sides with a view of the horizon in every direction. A bonus found here is an isotherm refrigerator allowing you to stay put when underway. Flanking the dinette are fold-down steps that give you access to the tower through a hatch in the roof. Also found in the hardtop are the teaser reels that we touched on earlier, as well as lockable rod storage found forward. Two custom bolstered helm seats with shock mitigating pedestals face the helm. This helm, as you can see, has an incredible amount of technology right at your fingertips. For the controls, she has a molded fiberglass command station with a full complement of Raymarine electronics. The primary display here is a Simrad Evo 3 24 inch multifunction display. This can be repeated in the salon down below and is made even more valuable because of twin Simrad 12 inch Evo 3 displays just to the right. Below the monitors, there's a row of control switches. Each is backlit and clearly labeled. Outboard, there are two VHFs, a JL audio stereo control, and a depth and speed display. Also found here on the varnished teak helm pod is a fully adjustable wheel, Mercury Smartcraft throttles, a Mercury JPO joystick with skyhook, and your thermal camera controls. There are even two chilled cup holders, making sure that whoever runs the boat can stay focused on the task at hand en route to your next offshore fishing spot. A lot of people have asked me why we started developing this line of center consoles and it really spawns back to about five years ago. I love fishing offshore um, and I'm from the Northeast so we typically make you know 70, 80, 90, 100, 120 mile runs depending upon where the fish are. Um, and we decided to take a trip. I had a 42 foot, that's my last boat before I, I developed this boat, was a 42 foot center console. And we decided that we were gonna take a trip. My son, my son's friend, two of my fishing buddies, and we were gonna head out, started about 100 miles. We were gonna go big eye tuna fishing and it was supposed to be calm and we would probably end up at 127 miles, 130 miles, depending upon where the fish were. Um, and, it, and again, I stress, it was supposed to be calm. Two foot, um, we got out there, started fishing, and the weather turned, and it turned quickly, and it was eight to 12 foot. So bad at one point that we couldn't even troll up sea, we could only go down sea with the boat. The weather was so bad that we had to huddle down into the console of my 42, and we were down there, no windows. Um, basically, it's like being in an MRI booth or a fish box with five guys um, all huddled down there to get out of the weather, and that was it. At that point, I had said, there no more. People have been compromising, people are compromising too much in the center console market. There has to be a better way to create this sort of hybrid vessel, and that was what spawned the 510 and the rest of the model lines in the 410 and the 610 that we're developing. Mark isn't the only fisherman who's had that experience of having nowhere to go in an agitated sea. Whether staying the weekend in calm waters or adrift on a seaweed line, her fully enclosed and temperature controlled salon, four steps down from the helm, is a game changer. Seven feet of headroom, a teak veneer package, and Antico flooring work together as they make this area both durable and uncluttered. Benefiting from natural light, the port side dinette can serve at both mealtime and after when it converts into bunks. Immediately aft is a Samsung convection microwave, as well as the breaker panels. This is directly across from the boat's head that has a separate glass shower stall, where you should also make note that there's additional rod storage in the floor. 
forward and to starboard in the salon is the galley with Corian countertops, a stainless sink, Kenyan two burner cooktop, and an isotherm fridge freezer. Above the galley countertop is where we see the salon's TV, as well as a window for natural light and a skylight overhead. There are two cabins for overnight stays, with the smaller of the two located midship with a queen berth. A bonus feature of the area is the rod storage found above the bed. And then we have the master, which is located forward of the salon, where there's a queen V berth with cedar lined hanging lockers on either side of the entrance. There's even a TV in here below the window in the superstructure, as well as even more rod storage in the floor by the entryway. So I think it's important for you to know what C4 Center Consoles is about. And we have three pillars at our company, and that is people, process, and product. And squarely in the center of those three is the customer. I'm sure that this is a common experience that others have had. I've bought new boats, and the experience has not been great. And afterwards, uh, the aftercare by the companies that manufactured those boats, I thought, really lacked. That's not going to happen here. That's not what we're about. So we want to make this a very enjoyable process and something that you know you look forward to and something that you want to buy maybe the next size boat up afterwards because you liked it so much. So there you have it, the Seaforce 51 center console. If you have any other questions about this boat, you can reach out to my friends and Denison Palm Beach Brokers. They'd love to get you on board. They know this boat inside and out. And if you have any comments or questions, we'd love to hear what you think of the layout, the combination of different platforms. Let us know, reach out down in the comments section below. We will do our best to respond. Hope you have a good one.